Welcome Algebra 1 students to another Readings Review video. This is the Algebra 1 Common Core Readings Exam. This is the June 2016 administration of this exam. These are going to be the solutions to part 1. Numbers 1 through 12 of this exam. This is the first half of the multiple choice um, for this test. Before we begin, please do not cheat. The algebra one is definitely doable, but you need to try the problems on your own. If you have problems, then come back here and I'll be happy to assist you. Um, but if you are here because you're ch checking your answers or you need a little bit of guidance, you are in the right place. Be sure that you hit that, uh, hit that subscribe button down below and visit my website at www.nysmathreadingsprep.com for much more stuff in Algebra 1. And just a reminder, I do use the TI Inspire CX calculator. You could buy this on Amazon, um, or you could just go to my website. I have a link to it uh, right to the Amazon website. Without further ado, let's begin. Question number one. The expression x to the fourth minus 16 is equivalent to what? So this is just a basic factoring question. And you need to know your order of the order factoring like the back of your hand. The order factoring is GCF followed by the difference of two perfect squares followed by the trinomial method, which is also known as the AM method. What adds to that number multi but multiplies to give you the other number. So is there a GCF here? No, there's no GCF. Is it dots? Absolutely. It's the difference of two perfect squares. So x to the fourth minus 16, this could be reduced to x squared plus 4 x squared minus 4. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is your answer. Now, personally, I wouldn't have stopped there. I would have kept going because this right here, this is also factorable by dots, but they, but the readings exam just decided to stop there. So your answer is choice three. All right, moving on to number two. An expression of the fifth degree is written with a leading coefficient of seven and a constant of six. Which expression is correctly written with these conditions? Okay, let's talk about this. The fifth degree means that the highest exponent is 5. The highest exponent is 5. If you look at all these answer choices, 5 is the highest exponent here. 6 is the highest exponent. That can't be the answer. 7 is the highest exponent. That can't be the answer. 5 is the highest exponent, so 5, 2, and there's nothing over there. So 5, uh, so five is the highest exponent. Now, the leading coefficient is actually attached to the fifth degree exponent. So the leading coefficient is 7. So the leading coefficient of this is 6. The leading coefficient of this is 7. So your answer is going to be choice 4. And just to make sure, it has a constant of 6. Constant means it's just a number by itself, so that is your constant. So your answer is going to be choice 4. All right, moving on. Number three, the table below shows the year and the number of households in a building that had high-speed broadband internet access. For which interval of time was the average rate of change the smallest? So by now, you should know that average rate of change means slope, and we're looking for the, the slope that is the smallest. Now, this is what made this question so difficult. It shows the year and the number of households in a building. Ladies and gentlemen, your years are your x values, your number of households are, are your y values. And the reason why is this. The change in time, because years is a change in time. Change in time always belongs, I don't care what you're talking about in terms of what the context of the problem is, but change in time is always in the denominator all the time. So in this case, since we're talking about years and we're talking about the change in years, it's always going to be in the denominator. So they just decided to flip the table around. I don't know why they did that. That's kind of mean, but whatever. All right, let's take a look at choice one. Choice one is saying that you're doing, let's see, um, 23 minus 11 all over 2004 minus 2002. That is equal to a slope of six. So your slope is six. Now, take my word for it if you want, but I calculated all these slopes. The slope of choice two is 8.5. The slope of choice three is 9.5. And the slope of choice four is seven. Your answer is going to be choice one because that is the smallest slope 
out of all of those intervals. All right, moving on to number four. The scatter plot below compares the number of bags of popcorn and the number of sodas sold at each performance of the circus over one week. All right, popcorn sales and soda sales. This conclusion can be, uh, which conclusion can be drawn from the scatter plot? So first and foremost, we're looking at po uh, negative, positive, no correlation, or buying popcorn causes people to buy soda. So this clearly is a positive correlation. This is a positive correlation, and um, it is strong. It's a strong correlation because it is very close to the, these dots are very close to the line of best fit. So it can't be negative. There's, it's not that it's no correlation. There definitely is one. Now this was the tricky part. Buying popcorn causes people to buy soda. Not necessarily. That's that that can't be drawn from this scatter plot. The answer is choice two. There is a positive there is a, a positive correlation between popcorn sales and soda sales. Yes, absolutely. Do we know why? No, not really. But buying uh, but buying popcorn causes people to buy soda not necessarily. I mean, you could just have popcorn eaters and you could have soda drinkers. I mean, you could have people I don't know. Wait a minute. This is at the circus. You could have people drinking because it is hot in the circus. Or you could have people eating popcorn because um, they're hungry. You know, I mean, you really don't know the reason. But it, th but the answer is definitely choice two. Number five, the Celluloid Cinema sold 150 tickets to a movie. That is some weird name. Um, some of these were child tickets and the rest were adult tickets. A child ticket costs $7.75 and an, and an adult ticket costs $10.25. If the cinema sold $1,470 worth of tickets, which systems of equation um, equations could be used to determine how many adult tickets A and how many child tickets C were sold? So they definitely sold 150 tickets to a movie. So therefore, A plus C, which is the amount of adults plus the amount of children, has to equal 150. So choices two and four make no sense because that 1470 is money. We're talking about money here. This I call the people function. The people function means how many people did you sell the tickets to? Well, 150 people. Now, um, we just need to look at the money function. The money function is down here. $7.75 for a child ticket. So child is represented by C. The answer is going to be choice one because that's $7.75 times C and 1025 times A, that's the adults, and that equals an amount of 1470. All right, moving on to number six. The table below shows the values of four different functions for the given values of X. Which table represents a linear function? Remember, linear function means a constant rate of change. A constant rate of change. The slope is not changing. Let's take a look here. This is increasing by the number seven, 12 to 19. 19 to 26 that's increasing by 7 23 to 30 uh, sorry 26 to 33 is increasing by 7 so your answer has to be f of x f of x is your linear function all of these you're increasing by 2 then you're increasing by 4 then it looks like you're increasing by 8 that makes no sense that's i don't know what that is this is increasing by 3 increasing by 5 and then this over here, this is increasing by 7. Over here, this is increasing by 6, increasing by 10, and then this is increasing by the number 14. That makes no sense as well. Your answer is going to be choice 1. That is certainly linear. Moving on, number 7. The acidity in a swimming pool is considered normal if the average, average of the three pH readings, P, is defined such that 7 is less than P, which is less than 7.8. In other words, your pH values lie between 7 and 7.8. If the first two readings are 7.2 and 7.6, which value for the third reading would result in an overall rating of normal? Ladies and gentlemen, this is a normal rating for pH between 7 and 7.8. So your pH value, to figure out what, what, the, what the number is, it's the pH value of the first number plus the pH value of the second number plus the pH value of the third number and divide all that by the number three. If you take 7.2 plus 7.6 and 
you decide to go right for 7.3 because why not? 7.3 is in 7 and 7.8. So if you do 7.3 and you divide that by 3, what would that give you? Well, 7.2 plus 7.6 plus 7.3. You get that number and divide that number by 3, you get 7.36. That is considered a normal rating because it's in between that interval. Your answer is going to be choice 2. And that's only if you plug it in. That doesn't always work. It's a coincidence that 7.3 lies in between 7 and 7.8. Because, for example, if these pH values here were like 5, the next pH value has to be really high in order to even it out. For example, um... If you, like, let's just say you have a pool and it's really, really heavy. Like, for example, and pH is, is, is in a pool. Let's just say it's really, really heavy with chlorine. The pH value would be skyrocketing to, like, towards the number 10. Now, if you know anything about pH and science, that, that's awesome. But if you don't, then that's fine. But a pH value of a pool could be 10 because there's too much chlorine in it. To get that pH level down back to 7, you need to add more water to it. And that's watering it down. But that's what's going on over here. It has to be 7.3 in order for this to be this number. But if these numbers were any different, your answers would be different as well. That's just a coincidence that it's that number. All right. Your answer is choice two. Number eight. Dan took 12.5 seconds to run the 100-meter dash. Okay. Um, he calculated his time to be approximately what? So you need to know that 12.5 seconds, well, there are 60 seconds in a minute. When you take 12.5 seconds and divide it by 60 seconds, this actually converts it to minutes. You get 0 0.28, no, sorry, 0 0.2, come on, 0 0.2083 minutes. Choice one. And you are done. That's how you convert. All right, moving on to number nine. When 3x plus 2 is less than or equal to 5 times x minus 4 is solved for x, the solution is what? So we have 3x plus 2 is less than or equal to 5 times x minus 4. Distribute that 5. You get 3x plus 2 is less than or equal to 5x minus 20. Now from here, we're going to subtract the 3x on both sides. We get 2 is less than or equal to 2x minus 20. Now you add the 20 on both sides. You get 22 is less than or equal to 2x. Divide by that 2 on both sides, and you get 11 is less than or equal to x, which is the same thing as saying x is greater than or equal to 11, which is going to be choice uh, 4. And that is your answer. All right, cool. Choice four. Moving on to number 10. The expression 3 times x squared minus 1 minus, in parentheses, x squared minus 7x plus 10 is equivalent to what? You're just going to simplify this as much as you possibly can. So I'm going to rewrite this real quick. Okay, we're going to distribute that 3, and we're going to distribute that negative 1. So we get 3x squared minus 3 minus x squared plus 7x minus 10. Now we just simplify it to its lowest terms. So now we get 2x squared um, plus 7x minus 13. That is your answer. That answer is going to be choice 2. And that's just by basic distribution, combining like terms, and simplifying. All right, that's it. Cool. Moving on to the next one, number 11. The range of the function f of x equals x squared plus 2x minus 8 is all real numbers for what? So the range, remember that your range is the y value, or the y values. So if you were to just graph this in your calculator, and you were to type in x squared plus 2x minus 8, and you press enter, the range is from your minimum upward. So your minimum value for the y value is negative 9. And then it just extends upward forever. So therefore, oh sorry, I spelled range wrong. So your range are values greater than or equal to negative 9, which is going to be choice 2. All right. 
Last but not least, number 12, the last question of this video. The zeros for the function f of x equals x squared minus 5x minus 6 are what? So, your goal, take x squared minus 5x minus 6, set it equal to 0, and you're going to solve. What adds to negative 5 and multiplies to give you negative 6? So that is going to be x minus 6, <clears throat> x plus 1 equals 0. Then you t-bar it, x equals 6, x equals negative 1. And those, ladies and gentlemen, are the roots to this equation. Your answer is going to be choice one. And that is the conclusion of this video. I hope it helped. And uh, make sure that you hit that subscribe button down below and visit my website at www.nysmathregionsprep.com for much more math content in Algebra 1 and uh, more high school math subjects that you will be taking in the future. And I hope to see you soon.